What's going on legends? In this episode of the Barra T4580 build, we're going to be making and skinning some tube guards from scratch. In a shocking turn of events to my channel, there's going to be no CAD or laser cutting in this episode. It's going to be all old school fab off the car. So let's see how I go with this one. Let's get into the build now. Down here at LCS 4x4 today and Lawrence is kindly helping me out with some guards. So these are honestly like quite hard to make and I'm really ha glad I've got Lawrence helping me out. So we're using his bender. Um, this is sort of what they're going to look like. And I just don't have the, the skills to do it <laughs> by myself at home. So yeah, I'm, I'm super glad I've got Lawrence behind me and a huge, huge shout out to him. Got a few sets, so we've got them all marked out and bent up. So I'm learning how to, uh, to use the bender properly today. Should be a good day. Three sets of guards on the go. Fair bit of bending here. What do you reckon, Laurie? Let's stick it together, mate. Got a jig which comes out the side of the car, which the guard sits on to get them all straight and parallel. So, pretty hard to build them accurately without the jig, I think. There's a lot of um, extra work to get this in the right spot. Three sets here, and this is my sets. I've got to take them home and fit them up to the car now. Can't wait. And fully weld them off. We've sort of just left them tacked, but that's all good. I can do that at home. Remember how I told you there was no CAD or laser cutting in this episode? That's a lie. I actually got these laser cuts. So these are chassis mount plates. This is the outer, so it's a clearance hole for an M14. And that's the inner, which is an M14 by two. This one's welded to the chassis. This one's welded to the guard. I've also got a triangle design as well, which you'll see later in the episode. So I didn't actually get it on film, but I installed the front guards and I wasn't really happy with the position. And I should have done the rear ones first, so now I'm going back to do the rear ones. After the rears are done, I've got a really good reference and I'll come back and do the front ones again. Down here at LCS 4x4 and he's upgraded the bender. So I'm gonna do all my rear guards here and then I'm gonna take it back home and weld it on the car. So I've got this beautiful hydraulic bender. Look at the speed of this thing. Onto the rear guards today. So we're planning on taking off the wheels, marking the center line of the tray where the guard should sit. And then I'm going to weld off a little jig so that I'm going to get my guards at exactly 1900 mil out of the outer.
front guard installed today, so these are actually really tricky to get right. Got my mate Max here helping me, and I think this is definitely a two-person job. So we're just trying to pack it up and clamp it. There's going to be a three mil sheet of alley on top of here. So we're just trying to get all the fitment right. So we've got these mounting tabs at the front here, which we will tack to. And then we've got these plates here at the rear as well. So we've got four M14s in total at the rear, two at the front. Get window packers, people. This job would be almost impossible without them. hundred dead. An absolute novice at the MIG welding game, so there's a fair bit of cleaning we have to do to these. All welded up and cleaned now, so we chuck them back on the car. So the guard design, I guess, yeah, the reason why, I, one of the reasons why I really wanted to go steel tray is so I could integrate the guard design into the steel tray. And I guess these are not actually mounted to the chassis at all. They're only mounted to the tray. So they still need skins. It's pretty cool seeing them exposed like this and I thought I'd show you right now before I skin them. I bent up these in 90s and 45s and then I came and I guess you, you'll be able to see from the time lapse that I actually came and assembled them on the car. So I had a join here and a join here as well. And the reason I did that is I'm not super great at tube work to be honest and I'm relatively new to the whole thing. So it's very easy for me to just cut and get the lengths right. We've actually sleeved on the inside here to make it stronger. So strength wise, it shouldn't be an issue at all. I've just got to do some finishing work to it to make sure that it looks really nice. But one of the cool things about this design is that it integrates into the main roll hoop. So this is now a very structural member and it really stops the roll hoop from flexing if it gets uh, you know hit, hit by anything. Okay, so from the front, these are an absolute prick to mount and get the fitment right now. I'm going to skin them with three mil alley. So I use my window packers to get a five mil gap in there. These took so long to make, like a couple of days um, to get all the bends and to get everything right. You know, if you're thinking about making a set, I mean, there is a lot of work in it uh, involved. Don't underestimate it. Another mid mounting point is from my radiator brace straight into the guard. So that's gonna give it that little bit of extra rigidity. These are completely structural guards. Let me just show you by sitting on them and, and testing them. Also extremely solid. So I've effectively got external scrub rails as my guards, which is really cool because it means that I don't need another piece of steel as a scrub rail. So these were so hard to get right and get them in parallel. I mean, my ground's not level, the car's not level, there's nothing to go off. So a lot of it's sort of string line and eye and just packing with those window packers. Another cool thing is, you know, the, the guards come out to 1900. I guess the 80 series chassis is a lot wider than the 45 series chassis. The body sits nicely inside the guard. So I think the body is around 1650 wide. My tray is 1700 wide and then my guards come out an extra 100 mil on each side, bring it to 1900. You know, in the bush, it's really cool because my body is going to be protected by my guards. So you're gonna put some sliders down there at some point, I've got to get around to designing and making them. But that, that might be after the car gets registered, I kind of want to just get it on the road and do some testing. First bonnet down shot in six months. I'm cherishing this moment. Hopefully there's going to be many more bonnet down shots and not too many bonnet up shots, but I'm sure there will be. And that'll just add to the fun. I immensely enjoyed making these guards. I, as I said, I haven't heap, done a heap of tube work and it was really cool to get on the bender and sort of learn how to do this stuff. I'm really thankful that I had Lawrence in my corner and my brother to help me out with the rear guards. And then I had my mate Max and George help me to mount the front ones. I honestly think this is a definitely a two person job. 
So if yeah, if you're going to do something like that, make sure you are you got someone to help you out. That's the front and the rear guards mounted up now. I'm going to flip the tray over, weld it all off, and then skin the guards in aluminium. Front's all done now, so we've still got to drill and tap them in. And we're just moving on to the rear, so we're just making the template out of more RAM board. Just figuring out whether to do these in one or two pieces. I think it would look cleaner in one, but it would definitely be easier in two. And I'll have to use a heap more materials. Just skin this guard and the other side as well. So the plan now is to drill and tap some M6s in there and then I'll use a painting hammer to roll the edge around and get a nice finish hopefully. Dave here helped me out, what an absolute legend. Driver's side all done now. I've still got to roll over the guard, so I'll just get onto the other side and then I'll do all the guard rolling at the same time. Just got finished up rolling the guards over. I'm pretty happy with it. It's kind of hard to tell with this material here, but I mean, have a look underneath it. It is relatively smooth. Sheet metal is by no means my forte. This is the first time I've done anything like this. So I'm really happy with the result. They're not perfect, but at the end of the day, this is a four wheel drive and it's going to get scratched up anyway. And especially the guards. One of the beauties of skinning these in alley means I can replace them pretty easily. I've still got the cardboard template, so I'll be able to do another cutout and uh, yeah, reskin them if need be. So I guess if you look at the fitment, um, they're not perfect under here, but the plan is to sink bolts through this, the bottom of this panel, which will screw it down to the guard and make it much more solid. So we'll get around to that. At the back here, pretty much impossible to get the fitment right because you can see that the panel indents along here. So there is a gap there, but I could space it out with some rubber or something like that. And then at the, at the bottom, pretty much bang on. I'm using two millimeter aluminum to skin the guards and I've used a heap of bolts along here to, to screw them all down. So I am super happy with the result. So for guard skin material, 
It's either steel or alley. I went with alley because it's nice and light and it's not a super structural part. Obviously, there are going to be rocks and stones flicked up at it, but I can definitely just replace one of these guards. It's not a big deal. I was worried about going steel because I was afraid of it warping and that's why I went the alley guard in the end. If it doesn't work out in alley, I can always just take off the alley and do a steel guard skin. It's not a big deal at all. So the front ones are going to be body color and then the rear ones are going to be painted black. Plan on putting a two mil piece of alley in here as an inner guard. I haven't done it yet, but it's a good rainy day job. On the front, I'm going to do an inner guard as well. I'm just not quite sure what yet, so give me some time to think about it. So finally, my FJ is starting to look like an FJ. I'm so stoked. It's taken, uh, I don't know, we're almost eight months in. So I spent around six and a half full days making these guards, including the skins and everything you see here. And I think the job is pretty much done. There might be a bit of metal work to do on these joins still before we go to paint. But... Um, yeah, so I pretty much had someone with me the whole time when I was doing them. So if you multiply six and a half by two to include the extra set of hands, there was around 13 full days spent on making these guards. I was learning how to do tube work at the same time and learning how to use a bender. So it probably took me a little longer as I'm a beginner and I've never made anything like this before, but there was a lot of work that went into making these guards. I enjoyed making those tube guards way too much. And I'm not just saying that, I genuinely enjoyed learning how to do tube work and use the bender. One thing I learned about doing the tube guards in this episode is how hard tube bending is to do properly and accurately. So mad respect to anyone out there that can do this stuff properly. In the next few episodes, we're gonna finish off the fuel system and plumb it properly. Hopefully we can start the car out of a fuel tank, not a jerry can. Then after that, we're gonna get onto the under tray setup. Have a look at the design of my under tray drawer right now. I've been designing it for the last few weeks in CAD. We've got sliders, we've got seals, we've got latches, we've got, we've got the work. So get excited for that one. We'll bang a water tank in there as well. We're also gonna be sending off the cab to get soda blasted and etch primed. Sorry to the patina lovers out there, but I'm painting this thing. Huge thank you to everyone that helped me out with these guards. There are so many people from the top. I've got Lawrence, Max, Miles, George, Dave, my brother Alex and my little cousin Evan. Thank you so much. There are so many man hours involved with these guards and I literally could not have done it without you. I'd still be going and this video would not be here without you. So thank you very much guys. If you guys enjoyed that episode, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down there and tune into the next episode of this build.